I'm Eric Newton, and this is The Together Show. We all know relationships take work, but what is that work, and how do we do it? As a former divorce lawyer, I've watched thousands of couples break up firsthand. Having seen the worst in relationships, I decided to try to help couples stay together. So on this show, we talk to real couples and find out what love really looks like. I think sometimes I will get very upset because I think he said something incredibly insensitive. And he has no idea that it was insensitive because he didn't think of the emotional impact of that comment. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for listening. This week's episodes are juicy. They're about race, gender, body image, privilege, and even the social pressures of choosing a last name. Now we're jumping into today's segment partway through the interview, so I'll catch you up. Marvin and Kamala have been married a little over three years. They met on eHarmony. Marvin was only Kamala's second date on that service, if you can believe that. And on their first date, it was obvious to both of them that something special was afoot. They spent hours talking together in a parked car way past their bedtimes. Things progressed quickly after that, and they were engaged within the year. Their initial courtship is a sweet story as an aside, so if you'd like to hear that, let me know, and I'll post it up as a bonus episode for Patreon subscribers. Now, to give you their family background, Marvin was born in Belize, and Kamala was born in Jamaica, and their families each immigrated to the United States when they were both very young. Today, Marvin works in HR for the city of Los Angeles, and Kamala works for Google. Now, we're joining the story just as they've given me an example of how they work effectively through challenges, And I'm asking if there are any issues that aren't quite so easy for them. So with that, let's join the interview with Marvin and Kamala. Is there anything where you guys haven't worked out the middle ground? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a couple. I'm trying to think. Let's see. Like like the the don't touch buttons, uh, like um, food. Uh. (laughs) I think think we have very different views on um, like, you know, healthy living and things like that and what I... Like how I view it versus how she views it, and I think she takes great offense to it. Um, and um, I'm a foodie because food is delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and he is a. I just think you hate life <laughs> when it comes to food. <laughs> no. He is a like. I enjoy food. This is an extreme, like um, I guess, characterization of it. But I think there's the like there's a eat to live camp and a live to eat. And he's definitely like he just told you this morning he didn't even eat breakfast. And he didn't even notice that that was a thing that, like, humans would do is eat, eat breakfast. <laughs> he, like, eats food when he may, like, faint if he doesn't eat food. That's not true at all because yeah. I weigh 200 pounds. But oh, <laughs> it, it's, it, it, it's, th- this is interesting because this is a lot of, like, um, <laughs> what you'll see in our communication where, to me, like, anyway. Yeah, it yeah, seems like, it. A, <laughs> no, it seems like a bit anyway. of an exaggeration. He or, thinks I'm uh, prone to or, hyperbole. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. I love that. <laughs> yeah, she, she's very, <laughs> very prone to hyperbole, but she takes her hyperbole really seriously, which drives me crazy sometimes. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so me, I, I, the way I see food, like I enjoy food. Like we went to Hawaii just now, and there were some places we went to where I was like, "Wow, this is amazing." But at the same time, like I, like, and where it comes back to is, I grew up in a family where, like, um. We had diabetes, you know, heart problems and things like that. So when I, the way that I view f- food is through that lens of, okay, you know, what, what causes these things? Like, why, why, is my, why is my grandma constantly injecting herself with insulin? Why have my aunt passed away? Um, why is my grandpa's legs being cut off? And it all, wow. and, and, and so that's, that's how I... So, and, you know, I grew up like, you know, grandma stop eating that salt, you know, <laughs> and, uh-huh. and things like that. Yeah. So the way that I view, so that really Im- impacts the way that I view, you know, health and nutrition and food and exercise. I think, I don't think you ever shared the grandfather piece with me, but from your perspective, like some food is definitely the enemy. 
uh-huh. and some mm-hmm. food like so I think like we joke about it but he will he has said like I don't like fried chicken which is like not a thing everybody likes fried chicken yeah. but I think he almost intellectually like he's able to disassociate himself yeah. from the enjoyment sometimes of things that are good that that taste good because it's got the potential to have your legs amputated <laughs> yes <laughs> which like I mean prone to hyperbole well, one but chicken wings not no, gonna but, get but you like it. Exactly, but 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 yeah. but but the thing, and so and so, I ended up like really studying it, and like, okay, how many how many calories can I? So I could. So now I'm to the point in my head, which is I, mean, I imagine could be annoying to anybody, or especially a foodie. But like I'm, so in my head, when I'm eating something, I can enjoy like a taco or or a piece of fried chicken or anything like that. But in my head, I'm doing I'm always doing this count mm-hmm. <laughs> of like, okay, this is. Um, of my 2,400 calorie diet, this is 500, so I can have this much at this time, and that's kind of how my head works. And so, <laughs> and so he um, gets his like armchair nutritionist like side out. And so, <laughs> for someone like me who like not only like do am I a foodie? I just love the taste of it, but food also is very associated with me with for me with like so being social and experience like I want to try all these different things I want to go to all these different places it's like a real like uh, luxury for me so there have been many situations where I've been like really excited to go to now I just don't even because I know but when we first started dating I would be like oh my god I can't wait to go to this restaurant and you'd be like what kind of food do they have which like now I've learned is like code for like how much fatty food do they have? Do they have this? Do they have that? And I just get so frustrated. Cause I was really excited about this. And now I got to like, now I got to think about like the calories. You're ruining this meal that I haven't even had yet. Can I just have my chicken and waffles? Can I just ha- like, and I, and I think that it, it always feels to me sometimes like I've known many healthy eaters, especially like in Los Angeles. I think like you can't, swing a, a bag or whatever it is without knocking somebody over because they probably haven't eaten enough. Um, but I do think that I have lots of friends who are able to like, if that's what, if that's what they're doing that week, they just kind of keep it to themselves. Like they can go to any restaurant but and he, just like, but since he's, he's your got a partner, t- yes. And maybe it's, I'm like, why exactly. do you have to ruin my meal? Exactly. Just like and, go and, there and, and have the salad. <laughs> and, and, and it's, and it's funny because, um, I'm all like when 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 we're talking to each other, we're always interested in like th- oh, there is no such thing as normal, of course. But like I'm, like we're always comparing ourselves to normal, and yeah. when when we're talking about restaurants or whatever, like um, for me, it's like I'm used to you. You go to a restaurant like you know you know, especially in my family, it was like once a week or twice a week or something like that. You'll go out and treat yourself to a restaurant. And when I got with Kay, I'd say it was, probably less frequent than that. Definitely not twice a week. Yeah, but but like but like for Kay, like literally, like there are times where five times a week she can go to a restaurant and have like these different things, or three times in a day. And I'm like, that's it's just it's just way too much because it's like you don't know what the you, you, it's very hard to keep you know anything consistent when going to a restaurant. So I I would I would have a hard time keeping up with that because it's like okay. Restaurants are good; like they taste good and everything, but I can't really tell, like how much is in that salad. <laughs> so it's it's very hard to keep up with um, with health that way. So, uh, so you're talking about it pretty well. I mean, you're talking about it pretty well. Mm-hmm. I can see that you're a little bit annoyed with the way it plays out. But have you we- reached a kind of equilibrium? about it when you're actually going out or is it still just frustrating every time you try to go to a restaurant? I think, well, for me, I, I've, um, I know not to, I know not to say anything about it. Like, like it's like, okay, that thought is there, but you know, I need to leave it alone because it's not good for our relationship. Yeah. It, it makes her feel a certain way. So. As I think what it was, it was a couple of things. Like one, um, I don't like feeling like policed or like told what to do think that would be a trigger for most people but definitely for someone like me that's like a a no-no um and then I think it was also like of course as a woman like it's connected to all of the the societal like standards and edicts that we have about what a woman's supposed to be like what a woman's supposed to look like what a woman's supposed to 
eat, especially in a city like LA. I think that like, and I've like worked very hard to kind of get to a place where I feel like I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm like, I want to be like the healthiest version of myself that I can be, but I also want to be the happiest version of myself that I can be. And I want to like, I'm not always thinking about like, you know, what do I have to eat to fit into that? Like, that's not the calculus that I'm doing all the time. And so even though like he would say and explain like, oh, it's coming from like the history of diabetes and hypertension and all these other things. Like, I think I just see and like maybe read into like most male comments about like food and diet as having to do with like a certain standard of beauty and vanity that I just really like, I don't, that feels like, pressure and oppression to me and the way that I deal with that kind of thing is that I'm just like I need that out of my space because I need to be comfortable with myself and I need to feel secure and I went through I think a lot of kind of struggles with that when I was in like high school and college getting to a place of being like no I think I'm good I think I'm beautiful and I would just feel like he's insulting me he's saying that he doesn't like you know, the way that I look, he's saying he wants me to do something different. And so we had to have a lot of conversations about like how I can respect like his point of view, but how he can make sure that like he's not encroaching on like my own personal sense of self and like how I want to live my life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that, 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 that is a consistent um, dynamic between us. Like um, we, we enjoy our, we enjoy our bands. We enjoy our debates, but what I think what we both, well, what I find frustrating, this is just personal to me, is um, like a lot of times when, and and hmm, a lot of times when we're discussing something, um, I feel like she puts me in this box of like um, like a misogynist, um, or racist, or like like some in one of these boxes where it's like that people act like she's an activist. And I, I, like sometimes I feel like, why are you being an activist against me? That's not where my head is. That's not where, th that's not where this is coming from. So whether I'm talking about food or whether I'm talking about how I think about race or, or how I think about women's rights or things like that, like, it, it, like a lot of times it, it, it devolves into, oh, well, you're a machoist or you're whatever, whatever. And it's like... <laughs> Like, well, like, where is this coming from? You feel like you're being quickly labeled? Yeah, the quick label. I feel like we should clarify, like, at least some of the labels. I mean, that is a fascinating comment, though, yeah, what, he's, like what he's pointing to. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, clarify some of these labels, and then let's dig into that, because that is... <laughs> so, just for, like, the average person listening, Marvin is in no way, shape, or form a racist. <laughs> or a misogynist. But, but I do say things. Or a sexist. <laughs> I think that what it is, is that, like, I'm very sensitive to, um, I'm very sensitive to kind of social norms and to like what I feel like are very, like just the uh, generally oppressive culture in which we live that we all take as normal. And it's happening everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And so I just, I push back on a lot of things. Like, you know, we even had a conversation once about like the, like calling women, um, females versus women and this is something that's like very prevalent I think especially in the African-American community and like um different like music and like television shows etc like oh I was talking to a female this or I like females do this or females do that and I find it very offensive because huh. a female is like that's not there's a name for a female human. It's a woman. Yeah. It's like basically then you've reduced this person to just like their sexual like parts and you don't hear it as much. Um, I was talking to a male or like males do this. It's like, I think it's very specific to women. And so we talked about this before. And I think during that conversation, he would kind of feel like, why are you like upset at me? You know, I'm a feminist. You know that I'm not sexist. I just like, here's why I've used female before. Like, thank you for telling me, but I didn't mean all of these other things that you've attached to like people who use the word female for women, therefore don't respect women, don't do like whatever else. And so I think those would be the types of a, a scenario where he might feel like I'm labeling him, but I I'm pushing back. Which I can understand, but whose responsibility is the interaction in a situation like that. Back to the food example, for yeah. instance. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that Marvin is commenting on uh, food that he's about to eat, and he's concerned about the calorie count because of his history with yeah. diabetes. Mm -hmm. And you take that to mean that you're saying something, he's saying something about your, your 
uh, your body, whatever. Yeah. And um, so you get offended, and you call him out for putting you in a role that uh, he shouldn't. Yeah. Um, now, it could be argued that he shouldn't say something about food at a table because it might trigger that for a woman. That, that, or it could be argued that you should understand where he's coming from. Yeah. Which, which one of those is the case, or where do those two meet? Somewhere in between, always. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to? Um, I also think, like, a, a part of it is, uh, like, I would say that I haven't always expressed, like, my view in the best way because it takes me a long time <laughs> to, uh, to articulate certain things. Um, well, she'd never heard about the point about your grandfather. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. Intense. Exactly. Um, so, like when I think back on some of our conversations, like I can see how it was, how it can be construed, or how it came off, you know, in that way um, that you know impacted her body or whatever. Because I, I would say things like, "Hey, if you, <laughs> if." You know, if if you become overweight, you know these things happen or whatever. whatever. Oh well, yeah, exactly. that is that is exactly. Okay. So that's more clear. Yeah, that's more you're talking clear. about her food and her body. Well, yeah, like like we talk, we like like because yeah. I, I would be concerned about all the restaurants and she's social and going all all to these places or whatever, and um so and so when I said it, it didn't it didn't it didn't inter it didn't come off to her and I didn't intend for that, but it didn't come off to her like I'm talking just about like health. And it just became about her body. And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, I'm talking about like this this frame of mind that I have when it comes to health and fitness and everything like that. I mean, that, I so. think part of it has just been like, I realize this October we will have been together five years. Mm -hmm. We've been married for three as of this September. And so, thank you. <laughs> so I think part of it is just like, practice and like I think one of the things that st stands out to me when you were talking about like relationships take work and marriage takes work like what is the work part of it is I think just like learning how to not just how to communicate but learning how to disagree with your partner and like and actually like not only like see where they're coming from but adapt your behavior accordingly I think for a while we were having the same conversation over and over again because he wasn't realizing that the way that he was saying it and the way that he was expressing like his opinion was very hurtful to me. He was very stuck in like, but I know why I'm saying it and I know where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and not necessarily understanding like how it's hitting me. Right, and right, I right. think that he has, um, it really incorporated my feelings much more in that realm that I think mm -hmm. has improved c conversation. Cause even to your example, like, you know, now he might still comment on like what he's about to eat, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. he like previously would also comment about what I'm about to eat right, and like, right, why right. are you ordering that? And like, didn't you have this yesterday or like all mm. kinds of things where oh, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> in what world? And yeah. that's why he would be like, he would always say, why are you comparing me to normal? But I'm like, in what world would it be considered okay to talk to your, um, mm -hmm. your female partner? <laughs> About like what she's <laughs> eating and what word. she ate last year. Yeah, that I don't or think, last week. I don't think there's any woman who would be okay with that. But yeah. and but it might be also though because of the context. Because if 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 she doesn't know where that where those comments are coming from, yeah. well, it feels controlling for one thing and yeah. paternalistic. But then also it does. Your your just imagination is just going to assume that 100%. it has to do with body, yep. uh, a body image and the female role. Yep. But if it was coming from this like fear, you know, yeah. this not pathological, but very deeply rooted old yeah. fear mm -hmm. um, of life and death yeah. because he's got food associated with fairly painful death, <laughs> um, then it does makes it more change? Sense. I think so. It does I mean, change, but, but you still don't want him to say that stuff, right? No, but I think it, at least like it helps you to understand, yeah. to your point, the context. So I think that like it felt very personal. Yeah. It felt like in some way I was not living up to whatever he envisioned that like a woman is supposed to look like, be like, 
eat like, and I think especially like in a city like Los Angeles where like you're constantly like the, the beauty culture yeah. here is intense. Mm-hmm. There, I would always be like, you know, women in my office would be on juice cleanses and all these <laughs> other things. And like, yeah. I haven't eaten, I haven't eaten a carb in however, and I just was like very strongly rejected that, that, state of mind and don't feel like my chief worth is in in what I eat or what I wear all of that like that's not what I have to bring to the table so I felt very like oh my god did I end up with a guy who like thinks like right. that's the most important part of me because yeah. if that's the case then I was like well I gotta I leave made a mistake because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well all right I want to come back to body image but first I want to ask you Marvin um, I can imagine that if I were having a conversation with my partner mm-hmm. about something that I thought was good, in fact, um, important to me and probably good for us. Mm-hmm. And she got really upset with me for just having this normal conversation. I would probably get defensive. Yeah, That's where I go first, and I don't like to admit it, but I do. And that would cause me to either withdraw or entrench and try again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um Obviously not the right move <laughs> in this case, but what did actually happen for you? Um, like, this situation brings up, like, just the thought about, like, we, I think, how she mentions, we are the same but very different. We communicate in very different languages. Um, and that's always been a challenge for us because I, when, when, she communicates in feelings. I communicate in like pure analysis. Like yeah. when, and I, I think an example is um, skydiving, right? <laughs> I want to go skydiving so bad, and I, I'm I'm going to do it like like sometime within the next year. And when I talk to her about it, she's like, "How? C- like it's not responsible." You being you know married now, you having someone that loves you for you to go skydiving. And and my response to that is, look, skydiving, you have a 0.0001% chance of anything happening with skydiving. If you're really worried about, like, you know, being hurt or whatever, stop driving 30 miles a day. You're 80 times more likely for something to happen than for me. And yet then for me, going skydiving, yeah. like, it's done, like, 10,000 times a day. And but for me, it's whatever. like, <laughs> like I have so, to, like driving is something that you have to do as part of sustaining <laughs> like your livelihood. Yeah. You don't have to skydive. So I would and always I say, say, you know don't what? Have, and I say you don't have to drive. <laughs> but, so I would always be like, why would you want to potentially make your wife a widow just so you can have an adventure rush? I'm so glad you brought this up because the like, next thing I want to talk about is boundaries. Yeah. But before we get there. You're, you're you're using this example to illustrate the point that you tried to do it analytically. Yeah. So so and yeah. and I realize, and that's another thing that I think um, also why I'm drawn to her is because she she helps me with a side of me that's not really strong, and that's understanding like feelings and uh-huh. understanding how um, how people respond. Yeah. 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 And so, but yeah. So when I re- so initially, especially in earlier relationship, where we'd have this conversation. I'd respond just by being like, "Hey, these are the this is the science behind what I'm saying." Um, <laughs> like, like you know, based on based on our body mass, we should do this, whatever, whatever. And so I would I would hunker down in in that area in that way, and she, and I'd be like, "Why aren't you hearing this?" And she'd just be like, "You're talking about me being fat," and I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm talking about like health and science <laughs> and like so." So it took a it took a while for me to understand like how important and how real those that feeling argument is and yeah. like it and that's like it, it it's been it was so foreign to me like I for mean the he would joke time. like uh, feelings <laughs> like they're so annoying because like can't you just understand what I'm saying yeah and it wasn't just like it wasn't just around like food it was like money I think is another like hot yeah. button issue oh, yeah. for us actually yeah. food and money sometimes are connected because going out costs money but right, right, right. um you know similarly like you know anything like he would always try to bring me like some list of facts that he, that somehow we're going to like 
invalidate like my feeling or like make me reevaluate how I was feeling about something. And I was like, that's never going to happen. Like there is no fact that you're going to present that's going to counter the fact that when you said this, I felt this and you got to deal with that. Sounds like a Republican. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) That's really funny that you just said that. I will. It's so ironic, too, that that sounds like a Republican. That was the big joke that uh, uh, John Oliver made about the whole Republican argument, right? That's a feelings-based argument. Yeah. (laughs) Because feelings have no place (laughs) in certain areas, but I would say, I would argue marriage is not one of those zones. Yeah, and, and and I honestly never, never, like, that never crossed my mind. Like that, that it can be in marriage, but well, uh, um. <laughs> it's hilarious only because I'm like the staunchest liberal ever. <laughs> yeah, that you yeah. would dare. Oh, yeah. compare me. Like he's just trying to like poke a specific button to get a rise out of me. It's fun. <laughs> you. Well, it's you know it's fun. I, I always wonder why that's fun because it is fun, but I, it's for the reason that you two are talking about right now. And then, like in a way, it tempers. You, you're tempering one another. You're you're pulling one another towards the center, mm-hmm. away from your extremes. Yeah, mm-hmm. His, he's very analytical, and you're very emotional, and you are pulling one another towards the center, and and I guess by teasing one another too, you do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's explore this question of emotions. Yeah. So I I had a reaction when you were like, you know, Marvin's very analytical, and Kamal, you're very emotional, because I'm not emotional and I think especially in the way that I think it's often used to describe women where yeah. like they think a lot about gender stereotypes racial stereotypes all types of stereotypes yeah and I you know you hear often like oh this man that like argued for his point was very passionate and this woman that argued for her point was either very emotional or yeah. very like combative or something using the same words exactly and the same expressions same level of commitment like and so I get really, I realized, I was like, oh, that's kind of a trigger for me because I want to explain, like, I'm not emotional. Yeah. I'm not some, like, person for whom, like, reason and logic and facts, like, have no place. It's just, like, I feel all these things. Like, but I do think that, like, uh, when it comes to intimate relationships, I'm very different than I am, like, in my work life. In my work and academic life, I'm a, like, get it done on time, on budget, on deadline, like, black and white, in or out, like, and I think even to some extent, like, in my um, personal relationships, if anything, I'm too analytical, and I'm draw like, I, I have a tendency to overanalyze, and I will draw connections, maybe sometimes where, like, the person might be like, whoa, I was not thinking that at all, so even, like, you know, when I'm thinking about, like, when Marvin, like, might have been like, oh, are you gonna get you know, are you sure we should get chips and guacamole? Whatever it is. Like, in my head, actually, I'm having an emotional response, but it's because I've done um, a, some analyzing where I've been like, well, if he's saying that, it must mean that, like, he sees that, like, I need to cut back. And if he's saying I need to cut back, that means he's not happy with the way that I look right now because he wouldn't say that to someone he was happy with. And therefore, if he's saying that to me, then I need to make sure that he knows that that's not, you know, the thing. I'm not here to optimize for his visual pleasure. And therefore, I need to take a hard stand so that he knows. That. And then I think that, like, there's actually a lot that happened behind that. And, of course, it comes from an emotional place. But in my mind, I feel like I've broken it down because I'm very analytical. <laughs> that was a lot there to unpack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think your listeners are like, whoa. Uh, no. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> I think my listeners are probably saying, yeah. But, let, <laughs> but let's break it down. But yeah. Okay. So, all right. So Marvin wants to break it down, too. The f- well, um, help me. The first thing I'm curious about is the emotional bit. Yeah. Uh, the emotional bit, I get your point. Um, that we certainly stereotype women and we have a lot less tolerance for whatever reason in this culture for women's expression of perspective, yeah. opinion, emotion. It's um, Reasonable responses to yeah. like stimuli. And that is, uh, it's, it's silly at best and oppressive at worst. Right. Um, and, and we all need to be more aware of it, frankly, I think. Uh, that said, in the dynamic that we were talking about, it did sound like, Marvin was less capable of articulating himself emotionally yeah. or even seeing himself emotionally. Yeah. And you were speaking, well, the way you said, I don't know if this is accurate, but you were speaking primarily from an emotional perspective. Yeah. As I think that, um, and I, 
it is something that we've noticed in our dynamic a lot. Like, I think sometimes I will get very upset because I think he said something incredibly insensitive and he has no idea that it was insensitive because he didn't think of the emotional impact of that comment. He just said, like, this actually happened this weekend. Uh. Um, when we were talking about... Um, so. Marvin has said, like, I'm a bit of an activist, and, like, one of the ways that I am is I'm very vocal on social media about um, injustice and equality and uh, race relations and all of that to the point where it's, it's a, definitely a part of, like, my personal brand and my, like, public brand is that I would want to talk about these issues all the time because I feel like, frankly, we don't talk about it enough. So when we were getting ready for our vacation a couple of weeks ago, Marvin was like, okay, so can you take, like, a couple of weeks off? Like, don't post about anything that has to do with, like, as he would call it, like, things that are just going to piss people off. And I'm like, guess what? People need to be pissed off. People need to get angry. He's like, I'll take a break when racism takes a break. And then, he, so he responds, and he says, I've dealt with more, like, firsthand racism than you have, probably, and I don't. And I was just like, whoa. And I think that was an example of where, like, he probably thought he was saying something, like, unemotional, like, Un irrefutable, just like, oh, here's a fact that I want to share. And I took it as like, you're saying that I don't have any valid claim to the platform that I've taken on because I haven't seen enough. And I was just like very upset. Yeah. And and like the progression of that conversation in my head went a lot differently. Um, even though that end was terrible and I, I blame myself for that end. But um but like so where it started was like, okay, we're like she had posted something on Facebook, and she, like every every like three times a day, she'll post something on Facebook. Like, look at this person who said something racist, or look at this person who said something feminist, or you mean something. sexist? I'm uh, um, sorry, sexist. Um, and you know, just 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 thing after thing, and then she'll get into these Facebook um, debates with other people and things like that, and um, and and sometimes it, it seeps into our you know our own conversation or our own um, time, dynamic our whatever. own dynamic, our own time, because what she'll end up getting upset about um, something she just posted or something someone said. And then we'd start talking about it and then we'd have different opinions or different views on that topic and we'd end up in our own little argument. And so, <laughs> and so I'm like, you know what? During during this during some period of this vacation, let's like let's just like you know put that to the side. Let's let's not post some things and let's just you know let's live in bliss for a little bit because we all know that you know this craziness is out there. We all know that stuff. And um, and the example that you or or the the argument that you used to try to articulate that point mm -hmm. was this was this argument that you've seen more racism than she has. And and the way that that argument came up was because because while while we were while we were um, on vacation while we were in the hotel or whatever somehow somehow one of these oh she 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 showed me something and I'm like you know what I don't I don't want to. I don't want to even see that right now. I don't want to hear that right now. But I'm like, this is real. This yeah. is really happening. Yeah, and she's happening. like, and she's like, this is really happening. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to hear it right now. And, and and like, basically, I'm not sure exactly what she said, but the, but the point of it was that, or what, but the, what I insinuated from it was that, Marvin, you don't really. You're not really um, involved in this, or you're not. You don't really take this to heart. You don't really. Um, you're not invested in this fight or in this struggle or whatever, and that's where that comment came from. Like, yeah. look, I have experienced real racism. What you, like, so like, I, 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 so it was more like a defensive response. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. A, it wasn't. But when I, but when I finished that response, she took it as I don't care about your cause. But I was, I was trying to defend myself from from what I heard her say, like that I'm not invested in, you know. Yeah, both. It's funny because both of you were sort of saying the same thing. You were <laughs> you were both saying, um, you know, racism is real. Racism impacts me, mm -hmm. and you need to understand yeah. both yeah. of those things. And uh, and and it, but it, it it's funny that both of you having clearly having that perspective of, on life turned into yeah. Because I think it was like a, a lot. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we find that like. 
at, at the end of like our disagreements, we might be like, actually, I think we mostly agree <laughs> what we're talking about. Well, and it's but it's the same dynamic we've been talking about a lot today. Yeah. Um, it, it, the guacamole example, which was I think Marvin yeah. probably the other thing you wanted to unpack, right? And what she was saying. Five oh right, when ago. I was explaining like how I get from the like. Yeah. Are you sure you want guacamole to like you hate the way that I live? Yeah, look. yeah, and, and, you, and you took it all the way around. To, I need to take a hard feminist stance, or else he's not going to respect me as a human. Yeah, right. And he's like, "But wow, I just wanted to know if we really needed guacamole, you know?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because the answer to that is always yes. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. Uh, um, but so, that's what. But that happens all the time, yeah. right? With yeah. you guys. Yeah. It, it's like this whole. But, this whole conversation goes on uh, uh, in your head. And the reason I'm only pointing to yeah, you yeah. in this is because you're the one who's given the examples. But I know that in my relationship, I get very annoyed when Aubrey does that to me. Yeah. Because I feel innocent in that moment. Yeah. And yet I do it to her. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I don't have any tolerance for when she does it to me. But when I do it to her, um, I feel justified. Yeah. And... I, we've only used examples of you, Kamal. So now I'm wondering. Yes. Um, Marvin, is this is this a one way dynamic, or do you do it too? I mean, I guess um, it's a loaded question. Yeah, it's, it's I'm, I'm pretty sure I do it too. But I, like, I, I, well, we've had this conversation a lot. Where I, and and I guess this is probably the way I do it, maybe. But um, but when I was listening to her. Rant. Rant. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. A rant. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, hold on. You, you're, you're saying right now that you do an analysis. But what I'm hearing is that you're analyzing the feeling you have. <laughs> you base your analysis on that feeling, and then you come to a judgment and you express to me that judgment. And it's like, and before, but but nowhere in there do you ask me. But nowhere in there do you ask me a question as to wait a minute, Marvin. This is what you said. What do you mean by that? It's like it's like okay, this is what you said, and this is what you mean by that, and, that, and like I think actually there's that's a, that's a poignant issue. Yeah, I actually think that there is an example like on the flip side too. Oh yeah, of course, I'm pretty sure. I there think is. that like when it comes to, so I'm I'm definitely like I'm the planner, I'm the organizer. I like things done a certain way, you know, in a certain you know time frame. And, you know, we would have um, disagreements sometimes about, like, different things around the house, like, you know, like, can you refill this in the fridge or can you take this out? And, like, he would get, like, very offended, like, when I would be like, I'm reminding you to do this thing because I know that you won't remember to do it otherwise. And I would feel, like, really unjustly, like, um, what's the word, like, like, I was unjustly accused of being a nagger and a this and a that when the fact of the matter was it is true that he won't remember to do things if I don't remind him. <laughs> However, I think in his head, part of what he was doing was like, she doesn't see all of the things that I do do around the house. She's harping on this issue. She doesn't appreciate me and all of these other steps of which I said none of those things. I just said, hey, can you do X, Y, and Z? You are speaking to my soul right now. <laughs> I, I, how do you resolve this one? God. What's the secret to that? What's the secret, honey? I mean, we got to back up, by the way, to the guacamole conversation. In a, in a minute, <laughs> but but so we're on a tangent from a tangent, and I need to know the answer to this one now. How do we resolve that one? Yeah. Because huh. I do feel like we've been doing better. Like, there was a, a while when it was a true point of, like, resentment and contention. Because I felt like I couldn't speak up. I yeah. couldn't ask him to do things without him, like you know, biting my head off. But on the other hand, if you don't ask him, it's not going to get done. Exactly. Boy, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Aubrey and I do this back and forth to each other all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's it's all a matter of, uh, hmm. Yeah, I think, I think, I think part of it, I think we've gotten better at it because I I work harder at paying attention to things. But, like it's all a matter of degree as well because what we also talk about what we, what I also mention a lot is like okay how important is this <laughs> like is it worth is it worth it and I think I think I think both I think like I say that but also but also like um in my head when these things come up now I'm like okay 
I don't like being told what to do, but is it, but you know, is she right? And is it worth it? Am I, am I going to fight it? And more often I just say, I'm not going to fight it. And I'll just go with it. Um, I think for a while, like from a logistical purpose, one solution that we tried was some kind of like a chore chart or chores wheel, because we found that like the trigger often was like the act of me telling him to do it made him not want to do it. Yeah. It wasn't that he didn't want to do that thing. Feel scolded or irresponsible or something. Exactly. And so like there was like an impartial chart that just said like, it's your day. Yeah. And I think like seeing that he um, was able to actually like respect that pretty well and that it did decrease um, the kind of fights that we were having about that stuff. Even now, like in the absence of that chore wheel, I feel like I learned something about like, how to interact with my husband better around these things. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if he feels it, but I do feel like I only say two of the 10 things that I think every day. <laughs> and I used to say all 10. Yeah. Well, but but then aren't you holding stuff back? I yes, mean, and but that doesn't not, feel good either. But to his point, it was like, I have to start to do some calculus for myself about like... Is it really that important? Yeah, what really, really matters. Yeah. Uh, because at the end of the day, like what really, really matters, like is my relationship with my husband Yeah, yeah. and like making Amen. sure that like we have a happy home that's like filled with like laughter and excitement and happiness. And, um, you know, if what I'm doing is constantly eking away at that, then like I'm going to lose the thing that I really care about, Amen. even if I have like all the dishes done. Amen. <laughs> so it's definitely, I think it's a constant, it's a constant challenge. And it's something that we probably negotiate and renegotiate all the time. But remembering your core value of having yeah. a home yeah. full of laughter and, and a good relationship with your spouse. And also for both of us, um, I think it's just understanding each other and understanding each other's intent. Like, um, like I know when she does certain things that I find grating or whatever, it's like, okay, this is who you are and this is who I married or whatever. And it's like, and your intent in doing that is not to grade on me. And I think it, it goes the same, same way the other way is just learning that, okay, if Marvin puts this, this cup here, it's probably going to stay here <laughs> and, or, or it's going to end up randomly on top of this <laughs> cabinet and I won't know how it happened, <laughs> but, but like, but, but it's knowing that that's, something Marvin does and th- yeah, there's there's an element there of just like okay this is how this person rolls and uh, am I willing to accept that and can I live with that and to what extent do I try to change it <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> or you know it can't change well okay the, uh, that's probably the pragmatic and right answer <laughs> now let's rewind back mm-hmm. to the guacamole <laughs> example guacamole. because there's there's something happening in that conversation yeah. that I think is is much bigger than your relationship and it's and it's it it speaks to gender dynamics and it speaks to race dynamics and just oppression in general um on on the one hand you have somebody saying uh, I was just making a comment about guacamole yeah and on the other hand you have somebody saying no actually you were making a comment about body and both in some sense, are right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Who, who's got the red light and who's got the green light when that happens in a relationship and the, then in a racial dialogue? Yeah. I think the green light tends to always go to the oppressed. <laughs> um, so, so oh, God, when, that, just, that just got me in the throat. That could just be the answer. I was yeah. actually thinking something very similar to yeah, that. Yeah, because like because once the once the press says, "Hey, you're saying something that you know hits on all this all this history, all this whatever," then it's on me to be like, "Wait, <laughs> like like I'm the one who has to recognize that, understand the history, or whatever, back up and and see how better to approach the conversation or uh, how to better you know." understand what's going on before and you know before I you know dig in further because I think like to follow up on what you said it's almost kind of like some of the calculations that you have to do there is like my right to be offended 
has to, or like, not even my right to be offended. Like my being offended trumps your um, your unwillingness to be called out. It has to. Like so, like you being hurt by the fact that I'm hurt is not the primary issue. Me being hurt is. And I think that's something, like, there is something around that, like, when it comes to debates that touch on these issues, like, of course, no one likes being called out and said, you've done something that's made me feel oppressed in this certain way. But, you know, when someone calls that out to me, like, I think it's my responsibility to say, hey, like, I totally didn't intend that, but I'm not going to give you a litany of, like, excuses as to why I did it. I'm just going to say, I'm so sorry, I was ignorant about that. I was, um, I didn't think about, you know, the, the full picture and like, I want to make sure that this is a great space for you to be in. And so I'm going to take a step back because it's not about like my hurt feelings. It's about like your issue. I mean, that's just so beautiful. I, it, it, and I don't know why I never just saw the simplicity of that answer. It applies in so many examples. It applies when you're having a fight with your loved one and accidentally, make them upset. Yeah. And then you get upset that they're upset. <laughs> and then it turns into a fight about whose upsetness was justified. And it's not about that, yeah. actually. It's about the relationship. And the simple answer is, I'm sorry I upset you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, like, some version of that fight a lot, especially, I think, like, whether it was about food or about our different like philosophies when it comes to money management or like just like we have uh, so many differences and I think we both had to like get to a point where like we checked each other and we checked ourselves when we realized that like my only horse in this race is that I'm upset that you're upset yeah that's not a real I I don't even I'm not at I shouldn't be at this table yeah like that's not what we're here to like diffuse if like you should be upset or not yeah. I said something it bothered you like let's talk about that issue um, cause I think part of it is just like growing up, like in my house, like I figured you were going to ask us about like conflict. Mm -hmm. Um, and in my family, like we kind of didn't deal with conflict. Like it was definitely buried and it was always expressed like at sort of like when it was like boiling over. And it was very much about like me when I would be upset with my parents about anything, like their answer was always like, uh, well, we're upset that you could be upset because you know that we have your best intentions at heart. Like, the intent is all that matters. It's like, no, the impact sometimes is what matters more. And so I try to, as much as possible, uh, be better about that or be different about that and understand that, like, just because, you know, Marvin knows that I love him doesn't mean that I can say anything to him and it shouldn't hurt him and vice versa. Yeah. This is fantastic. And it, of course, applies to the racial conversation, 100%. too. 100%. Yeah, I mean... I mean, that, it's... And um, l let's just take it all the way out to the big cultural racial yeah. conversation, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Right, the, when Black Lives Matter first started to get some media attention, you would hear a lot of <laughs> primarily white men mm -hmm. saying, well, but... Uh, I mean, yeah, but all lives matter. Yeah. Which just <laughs> thoroughly and completely missed the point, right? Yeah. But it takes a minute to stop... Because all lives do matter. Yeah. But it takes a minute to stop and, and, and back up from it and, and realize that the point is to say specifically yeah. this oppressed group needs some attention. Yeah. And we need, to be a, we need to be sensitive to the specific issues that this group that doesn't have a voice is facing. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're saying in the marital context. Yeah. And it makes perfect sense. But it's hard because yeah, like, and I, and I think we and and even and even acknowledging that I think um, where we also have some strain is like how that how the conversation plays out after you acknowledge that. That's it for part one of our interview with Marvin and Kamala, folks. Thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in for Thursday's episode in which these two share the story about what happened when they decided to hyphenate their last names. I have to admit, I was rather surprised at the response, and I think you will be too. If you liked what you heard on today's show, please subscribe to us on iTunes. It makes a big difference when you do that. Please also consider donating to our Patreon campaign. We're on a mission to crush shame, as you may know, and every penny really helps. You can find our campaign at patreon.com slash together. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash together. If you have any questions or comments, or if you'd like to be on the show, please reach out via one of our platforms. You can find our website at www.together.guide 
Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash together show. Twitter and Instagram are both at together underscore show, or you can email me at host at together.guide. Our producer is Charlene Goto. Our web designer is Courtney Munna. Our art director is Aubrey Pick. Thanks once again to my guests, Kamala and Marvin. Guys, you've got to come visit me this time. That's all for today, folks. See you next time.